Hello, everyone. This is Coder2J. You're all amazing. Today, we've crossed over 7,000 likes on our video, Airflow Tutorial for Beginners Full Course in 2 Hours. As promised, we're unlocking the second bonus tutorial about the Airflow Docker Operator. If you missed our first bonus tutorial on debugging Airflow DAGs, you can catch it right here. In this tutorial, I'll guide you through using the Docker operator to execute tasks in a Docker container. But before we dive in, don't forget to check out my latest one-hour beginner-friendly PySpark course. Plus, there are two bonus videos waiting for you to discover. All right, let's get started. So what exactly is the Airflow Docker operator? It's quite straightforward. It's just another type of Airflow operator. While you're probably familiar with operators, like the Python operator, which runs Python functions as tasks, the Docker operator lets you run tasks inside Docker containers as part of your workflow. You might be wondering, why should I bother to learn the Docker operator? Well, here are a couple of good reasons. First, code isolation. When you use the Python operator, you need to define your Python functions within your Airflow project. That's perfectly fine for small pieces of code. However, when dealing with complex logic, it's better to keep it in a separate project for better maintainability in the long term. That's where the Docker operator comes to your rescue. Secondly, the Docker operator significantly improves reproducibility and scalability. By packaging your tasks into Docker images, you no longer need to worry about managing the environment and dependencies. Airflow can simply pull your image and run it inside a container. Are you convinced yet? Let's take a look at a real use case. Here, I aim to create a data pipeline that involves generating a dataset and pushing it into an S3 bucket. After that, I need to train a machine learning model based on the created dataset and publish the model artifacts to S3. To keep things organized, I want to separate the source code for the machine learning part from the Airflow project. So, I'll package it in a Docker image and use the Docker operator to run it. You can find a GitHub repo link that contains the source code of the demo in the video description. Now, let's dive into it. Inside my Airflow project folder, I've placed the machine learning part under the SRC folder to keep it in a single repository for your convenience when cloning and reproducing it locally. In reality, I'd split the entire project into two separate ones one for Airflow and the other for the machine learning part. The machine learning part is quite straightforward. It consists of a Docker file that uses the Python 3.10 base image and defines the necessary environment variables. It also copies the Python requirements file and installs the required dependencies. Then, it copies the application code and executes the train underscore n underscore publish dot py script. The model underscore tuning dot py script is a placeholder script that prints a string message used here for demonstration purposes. The requirements.txt file lists all the Python dependencies needed for the project. The train underscore n underscore publish dot py file is a functioning script. It downloads the dataset from min.io, trains a regression model based on it, and then uploads the train model artifacts back to min.io. Now, let's navigate to the SRC folder and build a Docker image for this. It's a straightforward process. Before we begin, make sure that you have Docker up and running. You can verify this by using the docker version check command. Once Docker is confirmed to be running, you can use a simple docker build command. This command builds the image using the provided Docker file and tags it with the name regression training image and version 1.0. After the build command is complete, you can use the docker image ls command to check if the docker image exists. Now that we have our docker image, Let's take it for a test run using the docker run command to ensure it's executable. To do this, we need to set up a local min.io instance. Within the Airflow project, you'll find a docker compose.yaml file that has everything required to launch a local min.io. Use the docker compose up command to start it. You can access the min.io console by navigating to localhost 9001. To log in, use the credentials defined in the docker compose environment where both the username and password are Minio admin. Once you're logged in, navigate to the left-hand menu, 
Click on Buckets under the Administrator section and create a bucket with an appropriate name. Here I have already created one. Then, move to the User section and click the Object Browser button. Inside the bucket you've created, create a new path named Datasets and upload a data.cse file into it using the Upload button. You should find the data.cse file in the Airflow project folder, which you can obtain by cloning the GitHub repository for this video. Now that MinIO is set up, let's run the Docker image using the Docker run command. You'll need to provide four environment variables, as defined in the Docker file. First, MinIO endpoint. This should be set to host.docker.internal9000. Second, MinIO access key ID and MinIO secret access key. You can find these in the MinIO console under Access Keys in the User section. If you don't have one, you can create it by clicking the Create Access Key button. Make sure to save it as you won't see it again. Third, MinIO Bucket Name. This should be the name of the bucket you created. In my case, it's Coder2JAwesomeML Artifacts. Lastly, specify the image name which is regression training image, v1.0. Execute the command, and you should see two log messages. One will indicate the download of data.cse from MinIO, and the other will say model uploaded to MinIO. If you check the MinIO console, you should see the uploaded regression model artifacts. This confirms that our model training and publishing script is working as intended. Now, let's construct an Airflow DAG for our machine learning data pipeline. I'm running Airflow version 2.7.2 locally with SQLite and Sequential Executor. In the DAG folder, I've created a DAG file named mlpipeline with docker operator.py. Within this DAG file, I've imported the necessary packages and defined the default args. I've named the DAG with an ID of DAG mlpipeline docker operator v01 and set the schedule interval to none for manual triggering. This pipeline consists of two tasks. The first task simulates dataset creation by running a simple bash command with a bash operator. The second task is the model training and publishing task, which uses the Docker operator. There are several parameters that can be configured. First, we need to set the Docker URL. Since I have Docker running locally, I've set it to the default Docker socket. We can set the API version to auto to let Docker choose the appropriate API version. And if we want to remove the container when the task is complete, we can set auto remove to true. We can also specify the container name and image name using the image and container name parameters. Lastly, we will need to provide the environment variables for the container. In this case, we should specify the exact environment variables we used in the Docker test run. Once we've defined the task dependencies, we're ready to launch Airflow and run your data pipeline. Before we start Airflow, let's ensure that we've set the Airflow home environment variable to our current Airflow project directory. Normally, we can use the Airflow standalone command to start Airflow locally. However, there's a known bug when running Airflow locally on macOS. We can fix this issue by adding an O underscore proxy equals asterisk as a prefix to the Airflow standalone command. Without this, your tasks may fail with a return code neg signal dot sigseg. Once everything is set up, let's launch Airflow. We can copy the login password and use it to log into the Airflow web server. Here, we should see our newly created DAG toggle it on. Before triggering a DAG run, Let's check the MinIO console to ensure that the model published by the previous Docker test run has been deleted and that the data.cse file still exists. Now, go ahead and trigger the DAG. We will notice that the first task succeeds with a log message. Hey, the dataset is ready. Let's trigger the training process. Check the second task which has also succeeded. From the log, we can see that it runs the Docker container from the image regression training image, v1.0. It then downloads the dataset from MinIO, trains the model, 
and finally publishes the model artifacts back to MinIO. Double check in the MinIO console. Boom! We have seen that the model artifacts have been saved properly. If you remember correctly, in our machine learning project, we have two Python scripts. By examining the Docker file, we can see that the default command is set to run the train and publish.py script. But what if we want to run the other Python script without updating the Docker file and rebuilding the image? Yes, it's possible with a Docker operator. There's a parameter called command that can be set to the command you want to run inside the container. Uncomment the command parameter in the Docker operator and set it to run the model tuning.py script. Save the DAG files and return them to the Airflow web server. You may need to wait a few seconds until you see the updated DAG code displayed in the code section. Now, trigger a new DAG run. The first task should remain the same. In the second task run, you should see the log message, Hello world. I am a fake model tuning script output from the model tuning script. This demonstrates that you can easily switch between running different Python scripts without altering the Docker image. If you are running Airflow within a Docker container, there are a few additional configurations that need to be done. Let's go through these steps. First, in our Airflow Docker project directory, open the Docker Compose YAML file. Set the environment variable Airflow core enable SCOM pickling to true. Second, you'll also need to add a Docker socket proxy service. This is necessary because Airflow inside a container cannot directly connect to the default Docker socket outside the container, which is a known issue referred to as Docker and Docker. Third, in the DAG file, modify the Docker URL to TCP forward slash forward slash Docker socket proxy 2375. This ensures that Airflow can communicate with Docker correctly. Fourth, for the purpose of this demo, we'll continue using the train and publish.py script. Now, launch the Airflow server. Log in and make sure you can see the ML pipeline DAG. Toggle it on and double check that the model artifacts in the MinIO console have been deleted. And the dataset is present. With everything set up, safely trigger the DAG. You'll notice the first task is completed and you can find the log message. In the log of the second task, you will see that it runs the Docker container with the defined Docker image. It then trains the model and publishes the artifacts to MinIO. Verify this by checking the MinIO console. Boom! We have seen that the model artifacts have been successfully uploaded. Congratulations! You've just learned how to use the Airflow Docker operator to streamline an end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up. Let me know what topic you'd like to see in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.